This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so we're going to, the plan is to finish up the parak today, and then we're going to stop at that point, and I will, because uh, Art will be taking over, I'll be waiting next week, so I want to let him start at, at, at a proper place with the new Mishnah, and today's learning is the Eloi Nishmas Laura Weissman, Allah Shalom, it is her yard site today. So we know that there needs to be, well, according to most opinions, at least, there needs to be Yediya in order to be chayev, liable, obligated to bring the carbon olive that fluctuating carbon, when a person um, for tumah to mikdash for kadash, a person in a state of tumah entered the Beit HaMikdash or ate sacrificial uh, sanctified food, there needs to be yediyah, knowledge beginning and end. Okay? And then we had a machloket in, ter- uh, uh, in terms of how much yidia do you need to have? So let's double back to where on daf 18, uh, yutet amibes, okay? And let's go down, let's go down again, seven lines from the top to this case. Last word on the line. Halach Berishon. The case over here is there are two paths. Okay? There is uh, Michael's, there, there is Harvard and University. Okay? Over here. Harvard and University. We know that a person that was a grave, a body that was buried on one of those roads. So whoever travels on that road will become Tame. We just don't know, is it on Harvard or is it on university? It's a case where nobody knows. We, about. correct. Not just the individual. Correct. Okay. Correct. We don't know. Halach Berishon. The guy traveled on road number one. So what is he now? He's Suffolk Tame. He might be Tame. He might not, right? He knows that he might be Tame, right? So we hear that that is a, a, a questionable yidiya, knowledge. V'nichnas, and then he went to the Beis HaMikdash. Okay? He's up, he came out, right? And he, went, he forgot that he had traveled on road number one. He went to the Beis HaMikdash. He realized, oi! I went on road one, I might be Tame. So what did he do? Right afterwards, he went through the purification process, which is the sprinkling of the of the spring water mixed with the with the ashes of the para, Duma the red heifer. That's done on the third and seventh day. He's uh, it was sprinkled on him. Vishana, and it was repeated day three, and it was repeated on day seven. Vitaval, and then he went to the mikvah. So now he's good to go, right? Even if he did become Tame when he traveled on road number one, he's Tahor now. The Chaz of Ahalach Bashani. And then he traveled on road number two. And he forgot that he traveled on road number two, right? It might have been six months later. And what did he do? Vinichnas, he went into the Beit HaMikdash. So now, Chayav. For that, so he will be chayav, he'll be obligated to bring that korban, that sacrifice for having entered the Beit HaMikdash while you were Tameh, right? He knew about it, forgot and entered. Why? Because, well, he entered twice. He entered after traveling on road one, and he entered after traveling on road two. And therefore, bonafide, right, he has entered, he was in the Beit HaMikdash when he was Tamei. We don't know, was it trip one or trip two, but he entered when he was Tamei, and therefore Chayav. But Rabbi Shimon Potter. Rabbi Shimon says, no, he will be Potter, right? Why will he be Potter, according to Rabbi Shimon? How do we understand it? It works retroactively 
because wow. there was no idea when he went in the right you have to have an original idea you have to know that i was tame forgot that i was tame entered the base on mikdash and then had my oive moment oh yeah, i went in when i was tame but over here he doesn't have idea why doesn't he have idea Sure. He never knew that he was Tame. He knew that he might be Tame, so but he what? didn't know that he was Tame. So, the so therefore, he's the Potter. The first time he went through, it was the same case. He didn't need to uh, do the sprinkling. He didn't know. No, wait, one second, one second. So Ray is saying the first time, also, why did he sprinkle? No, 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 no. If I'm Suffolk Tame, then if I might be Tame, what do I have to do? I have to go through the purification okay. process, so right? But, but I will not bring a sacrifice into the, I'm not obligated to bring the sacrifice for having entered into the base image when I was Tamei, unless I knew I was Tamei, right? We always say that's the difference between Tumat Mitzvah, Shekarashav, and every other mitzvah. Every other mitzvah, I didn't know, I did it. Now I found out, oh, you shouldn't have done that. So I bring a chatas, I bring a korban. Over here, what's unique is you have to have known. So I knew I was Tamei, I knew I couldn't enter the Mikdash, I forgot that I was Tamei, or I forgot that this was Mikdash. I entered the Mikdash after I had my Oive moment. So I need to have Yediya. I need to know. Over here, I never knew that I was Tamei. I knew that I might be Tamei during the first, after I traveled on the first road, and then I traveled on the second road, right? And in I, I returned the first road. I went to the base on Mikdash. I forgot that I traveled on road one, purified myself, right? Traveled on road two, forgot that I traveled on road two, went to the base on Mikdash. Neither time did I have that necessary requisite Yediyah. I knew that I was Tameh and then Ne'elam. And then it was, it was, it eluded me. I, I became unaware. I never had that idea. To the point the Gemara asks, Am I chayiv? Am I chayiv? Why does the Tanakhama, why does the first opinion say that I would be liable in that case? I never knew that I was Tamei. Suffolk Yediyahu. It was always, I never had that knowledge that we only, you need to have Yadiyah, Ne'elam, Yadiyah. You knew, unaware, forgot, unaware, Yadiyah. You knew, realization, right? You don't have it. Two approaches. Um, Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Khan asu safik Yadiyah ki Yadiyah. Over here, and we'll soon see as Gemara continues, here, that suffix yidiyah, that knowledge that you were suffix tamay, we make, that's, that's enough of a yidiyah. Excuse me, that's considered enough of a knowledge, therefore it's considered that you knew, you forgot, you evade, you obligated to bring the sacrifice. Reish Lakish has another answer. Reish Lakish, Amar, no. That Suffolk idea is not enough. That's not considered that you knew. But not everyone says you need to have known, forgotten, known. Yediyah, Ne'elam, Yediyah. No. Ha, money. Who does this go? Ha, this money. According to whom does it go? Who's the author of this? Rabbi Yishmaeli. It's Rabbi Yishmael, he, the Amr, who says, Lo He holds, you don't need that Yediya in the beginning. You don't need that initial Yediya. So we're asking, why is he Chayev? He never knew that he was Tameh. He only knew that he might be Tameh. Well, I don't need any Yediya at all. That whole premise that we've been working on, you need to have awareness. Nelam, lack of awareness. Awareness, no, he disagrees. He says, if you didn't have awareness and then you found, and then all you need is you didn't know and you had, and then you had your oive moment. And that's why you'll be liable in such a case. 
But Rav Yochanan says, no, you need to have that initial that initial idea. But this knowledge, this awareness that you might be Tommy, because I went on road one, I might be Tommy. I went on road two, I might be Tommy. That's considered enough of an awareness. A mixat yidiya or a suffix yidiya is sufficient. The Gemara asks, though, Viramid Rav Yochanan ad Rav Yochanan, Viramid Reish Lakish ad Reish Lakish. We have a contradiction of the way Rav Yochanan answered over here and what he says elsewhere, and a contradiction of what the way Reish Lakish answered over here. He said it's Rabbi Yishmael who holds you don't need any aware any initial awareness at all. And the way he speaks about another situation. Ditanya, let's hear the Brita and how each of them explain that Brita, and we'll see how that seems to go against the way they explained over here. Let's hear. Ditanya. Achal Safek Chelev. Okay. If I ate chelev, chelev is fat. We're not talking about a good fat, you know, that, that, that adds so much flavor to our meats and adds so many inches to our waistline, right? But we're talking about chelev, which is the part of the animal, the behema, which if it were brought as a sacrifice, that would go onto the altar. And that sacrificial chelev even today, we're not allowed to eat, right? All of that is cut away from our kosher meat. We're not talking about the fat that surrounds the muscle. We're talking about specific um, lodges of fat that are by the liver, by the this, by the that area, that we're not allowed to eat. Now, if a person ate chelev, they need to bring a, they need to bring a chatas, a sin offering. If a person is unsure if they ate chelev, they bring what's called an asham taloi, an asham a guilt offering, taloi that's sort of hanging out and that, that's, that will suspend any heavenly culpability for your infraction. If and until you find out it really was chelev, okay, now I bring, now I bring a chatat. Okay, so let's hear the case. Achal Safek Chelev. A person ate Safek Chelev. Person ate Chelev and then found out, oh, Sinar, that really good, fatty, tasty burger that you had, I, I have bad news for you, right? That might have come from the Chelev part of the animal. Oh. So at this point, what do I need to do? I need to bring an asham talur, the noda. And then before I had the chance to bring my asham taloi, suffolk chelev. A month later, I had another burger. It was hauntingly, familiarly delicious. And then I'm told afterwards, uh-oh, senior. That was another Suffolk Chelev burger. Rebbe Omer, Rebbe says, Kishem Shemevi Chatat Okol Echad Ve'echad, the same way that if I ate Chelev, and I realized I ate Chelev, right? And then what happened? A month later, I, I ate Chelev, and I found out that I ate Chelev. What do I have to do? How many Chatat do I need to bring? Two, right? If it was all one without any awareness in the middle, then I only bring one chata. That's considered one bout of eating. But if it's two, the idea in the middle separates the two. So the same way I bring chatat, I'll call echad ve echad. Kach maybe asham taloi, I'll call echad ve echad. So too, I'll need to bring an asham taloi on each. Right, for each instance, I need to bring two korbano, two animal sacrifices, each one being that Asham Taloi. Rav Shimon ben Yehuda. For Rav Allah's and Rav Shimon, they, Amru, they both said, Mishum Rav Shimon, Eino maybe Ella Asham Taloi Echad. You only need to bring one Asham Taloi. Why? Shinemar al Shigigato Asher Shagag. 
for the shigagot, for the mistakes in the plural, asher shagag, that he erred. Hatora ripta shigagot harbei v'ashen to lo yechad. Right? Shigatav asher shagag. Right? Not shigagot is plural, sorry. Shigatav asher shagag for the mistake that he mistaked. It could have said for the shigagot for the mistake that he did. Right? What shigatav asher shagag? It says for the shigaga, asher shagag, he needs to bring what? An ashram toloi. How many times was the word shagag written? Twice. And how many ashram toloi do you need to bring? One. See, he understands how Torah ribta, the Torah added on shigagot harbei for numerous shigagot, for numerous errors. Shigagot asher shagag. What does he bring? The ashram toloi echad. He only brings one ashram toloi. But according to Rebbe, which we, which we'll be focusing on right now, Rebbe says you need to bring two. Now, what happened in the middle when he knew that he ate this chelev? What was it? It was a case similar to the guy who who drove on road number one because. He knows that he might have eaten chaylev. He might not have eaten chaylev. The guy drove on road one. He knows he might be Tameh and have entered the Beit HaMikdash. Right? He knows he might be Tameh. Here he knows that he might be. Right? It's a limited knowing. It's, I, I definitely know maybe. I know for sure that maybe I ate chaylev. I know for sure I maybe became Tamei. He knows for sure after he went on the second one. Before we get to the second one, we're talking about after he okay. went on the first one. He knows for sure that he might be Tamei. He knows that he might have eaten Chela. Rebbe said, you're liable to bring two. Right? You're obligated to bring two. Amar Reish Lakish. Reish Lakish explains Rebbe in the following way. In the following way. Amar Reish Lakish. Kan Shana Rebbe. Here Rebbe learned. Yediot Sveikot Mitchalkot Lechatot. Here Rebbe learned. What Rebbe is saying is just like by Okay, have a very good shot. It's good seeing you. Okay, regards regards to the family, please. Okay, Yidiot Sveikot Mitchalkot Lechatot. Here, Rebbe is saying that when he, if he were to find out afterwards that both of them, that it was Chelev, what does he need to do? Thank you, John. He'll need to bring two Chatot. Right? He ate Sabe Chelev, wasn't sure what to do. Right? Right? Didn't know. Eight Suffolk Chalev. Right? And then finds out that both of them were Chalev. Reish Lakish understands. Oh, Lieli, sweetheart, how are you? Everyone gets to see how cute she is. There she is. What do you have? A seashell. A seashell? Wow, that's amazing. Did you get that by the beach? Wow, such a, such a, such a you're lucky special girl. Have a good day, sweetheart. So, Reish Lakish understands Rebbe is saying as follows. Yidiot kan shona Rebbe. Here, Rebbe tells me, Yidiot sveikot mitchalkot lechatot. If in a case where I don't know if it was chayla, and then I ate a second one, and I don't know that it's chaylev. And then I find out both were chaylev. 
What do I need to bring? Two chatot. Even though in between, I never had a real yidia. I only had a suffix yidia. Remember, if I ate chaylev, and then I ate chaylev, right, 10 minutes later, and I find out that's chaylev, right, what do I bring? One chata. It's considered one eating. But here in the middle, he found out not, at, right, but, and if I ate chaylev, I know it's chaylev. And then I eat chaylev, and then I find out it's chaylev, for sure. Then clearly, I need, if I knew for sure in between, after the first one, Sina, you ate chaylev. Oh, yeah, I had to bring a carbon. Next week, I go to a different, a different burger joint. And then he said, Sina, that was chaylev. Oh, hey, what do I have to bring? Everyone says, what do I have to bring? Sure. Two chatot. What, what Reish Lakish is saying is Rebbe is saying in this case, where after the first one, they say, Sina, that might have been Chalev. Oy vey, right? And then I, have, I go to another place. Sina, that might have been Chalev. Oy vey. And then it comes in. The, uh, the, the OU contacts me and says, we've done our investigation. And Sina, in fact, both of them were Chalev. Rebbe will say, I need to bring two Chatot. Even though in between, what did I have? Only a suffix. My knowledge in between was that, right, store number one, burger joint number one, might have been chaylev. And now I'm number two. I eat number two. And then I find out both were chaylev, even though everyone, everyone agrees. If I had no knowledge, it was all one big eating, and I find that afterwards both those burgers, seen he ate two burgers there, both of them were chaylev. What do I bring? One chatot. And everyone agrees. After the first burger joined, I get a call from the OU. I'm sorry to tell you that they we revoked their hechsher. They fed you chaylev, right? And then I go to another burger joint. And then I, the phone rings again. Senior, sorry. Lightning strikes twice. We just revoked the hechsher on that burger joint also. You also ate chaylev over there. Everyone agrees I have to bring two chatot. What Reish Lakish is saying is, if I had a suffix that might have been chaylev in between, that's going to split it up. That's what Reish Lakish, that's what Rebbe had said. That's how Reish Lakish explains Rebbe over here. Kan Shana Rebbe, Yediot Sfeikot, a maybe knowledge in between, Mitchalkot Lechatot, will split the chatot. I need to bring two chatot. Yes, Joe. There's people that had meat from the kosher place wasn't kosher meat was that just one incident when they became aware of it <laughs> so, right so so you, you, you had you, you when we had an allegedly kosher butcher place that and everyone's going there paying top dollar for this top hefture right and, and right there there's one yidia at the end and that would be one chata that they need to bring so that's they became aware of it correct Rav Yochanan, um, Rav Yochanan says, no, that's not what Rebbe is saying. What Rebbe is saying is, Keshem vade ba'alma mitchalkot l'chatot. What Rebbe, so according to Reish Lakish, why does Rebbe say you need to bring two Asham Taloys? Well, the same way that when you would find out in this very case that both were Chaylev, you have to bring two chatot. Well, if you don't know, then when you don't know, you might have done, but you don't know, what do you bring? Ashim Taloi. The same way that in this case, you would bring two chatot when you would find out for sure. As long as you don't know for sure, what do you have to bring? Two Ashim Talois. Rabbi Yochanan says, no, that's not what Rebbe is saying. Rebbe, the reason he obligates you to bring two Ashim Taloi's is as follows. The same way that by a if you knew for sure you sinned, you ate chaylev. And then you went to another burger joint, and you knew for sure that you had chaylev, you'd have to bring two chatot. Only if you knew for sure, because a chata is when you knew for sure. Well, an asham tali is when you you know besuffic. You know that you might have. So just like the chatat is for a vadai, if you knew for sure vadai in between, you bring two. So to over here for the ashtam toloi, if you knew that you might have in between, 
you have to bring two. Kach yidiot suffik. When you know that you might have mitchalkot la'ashamot. That will mean you have to bring two. So what are we saying over here? We see that according to Rabbi Yochanan, in the case, not the Ashim Taloi, in the case of a real Chatat, now sometimes you bring a real Chatat, right, which is, a, which is an exact animal. Sometimes you bring, for your sin, you bring our fluctuating, our Oliviore. But you see that for a not a taloi for a kavua hala, for a set sacrifice. What type of knowledge do you need to have? Full knowledge. Reish Lakish said, just like over here, right? By a chatat, a partial knowledge would be enough to obligate you in a chatat when you find out for sure. A partial knowledge in between, right? And so Reish Lakish is saying a partial knowledge is enough to obligate. And Rabbi Yochanan is saying a partial knowledge is not enough to obligate. That's our contradiction. Because up above, in the case now of road one, you, you entered Beit HaMikdash, purified yourself, road two, right? So what do you have over there? You have a suffix idea. Rabbi Yochanan said that's enough to obligate you in your korban. Yeah, you had a suffix idea, and now you've gone on both roads, so you definitely became Tame. Each time you had a what? A knowledge that you might be Tame, but between the two, you know for sure. But initially, each time, what did I know? I knew that I might be Tame, similar to I know that I might have eaten Chelev. And there Rav Yochanan said, you're liable. And here he said, you will not be liable. So, going back to that case of the kosher butcher selling the bad meat. What if someone... Let let me come to that afterwards. Okay? You're asking about the case in whatever, in LA, right? Let's just try to keep, because this is complicated. So Gemara answers. Bishlam with Rabbi Yochanan, Ad Rabbi Yochanan, Lo Kashya. Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan, that we can resolve that. Why? What did Rabbi Yochanan say up above? Khan Asu Safik Yidia Kidia. That's how we began today. Rabbi Yochanan said, over here, this is a unique special case when it comes to Tumat Mikdash the Kadashav, the desecration of the Mikdash or the sanctified food. Khan Asu Safik Yidia Kidia. That's what he said. Khan Asu. Here we consider a partial Yidia to be a full Yidia. But, but elsewhere not. Rabbi Yochanan said, this is an exception. So you can't ask a question. Ah, oh, how come over here he says partial is enough and elsewhere he doesn't? No, that's exactly what he told you. Here we make partial enough. Elsewhere we don't. Why not? Hachahu, over here, delocative yidiya behedya. Here it doesn't say, it doesn't say clearly he knew and then he became unaware and then he knew. It doesn't say clearly that first awareness. Rather, mivanelam hu, dikaasi. Good morning, Sam. How you doing? Oh, you doing a funny walk? Uh oh. There's a ministry of that in, in England, Ministry of Funny Walk, Sam. You're going to be a superstar. Good to see you, sweet boy. Have a good day. Huh? Now I have a funeral and I'm going to at 10 o'clock. So not be a concert. <laughs> so he said clearly, so there the Torah says, V'ne'elam. He became unaware. That's how we learn out that initially, what did he need to have? Knowledge. But it doesn't say explicitly he knew. Therefore, we're saying a partial knowledge, and if you lose that partial knowledge, then that is a fulfillment of the ne'elam, that he became unaware. He became unaware of whatever he knew. It didn't say that he knew fully. It said he became unaware. So he even if he had partial knowledge, if he no longer has that partial knowledge, we fulfilled what the Torah says, which is, the Nalani became unaware.
I'm sorry. Hacha here who here it's enough why it doesn't say that he knew it says v'nelam right and the v'nelam the ka'asi v'lo v'cholator kula asu but elsewhere we're not going to say this why dichtiv oh hoda alav by a chata bring by by bring a chata what does it say oh hoda alav or it became known to him which means there you need to have known if the torah says known you need to fully know here it never says that he knew it says he became unaware okay if it says he knew it means full awareness if it says he became unaware that can include he became unaware of whatever degree of awareness he had in the first place whether it was for sure I did, or whether it was I might have. Ella, Reish Lakish, but for Reish Lakish, we got a problem. Over here, Reish Lakish says that you bring two chatot, which means that a partial awareness is enough. So when we ask why in the case of road one, purified, road two, why do we say that he's chayev? Reish Lakish said, gee, I don't know. Right? That partial awareness is not enough. Oh, it must be we're going according to Rabbi Ishmael, who says what? You don't need any awareness at all. So Reish Lakish before was saying partial awareness is not enough. Over here, Adamokam, again, over there, Reish Lakish said, right, why should he be liable? So Rish Lakish was saying partial awareness is not enough, right? So over there where it didn't mention knowledge, he says partial awareness is not enough. Here where it does mention he knew partial awareness is enough. Doesn't make sense, right? Rish Lakish, if, if over here he says partial awareness is enough, he must hold over there partial awareness enough where it doesn't say he knew. If where it says he knew, he says partial awareness is enough, then certainly over there partial awareness is enough. So why do you have to say, oh, this goes according to Rabbi Yishmael, who says you don't need awareness? No. Let's say it goes according to everyone who says you do need awareness. You say partial awareness is enough to bring a chatat where it says, and he knew. So over there to certainly be enough. Ella, Laresh Lakish, why are you saying it goes to Rabbi Yishmael who says you don't need awareness? No, Rabbi. Say that it goes according to Rabbi, who you just explained, Rabbi holds partial awareness as enough, even in the case of the Chalev and the, and the Chatat, where the Torah says, he knows that he sinned. And according to you, the way you, Rish, let me explain, Rabbi, I had that burger, I know it might be a problem. That's all I know. I know it might be a problem. And then I have another burger. And then I find out that both of them were chalev. My my knowledge in the middle of I know that it might have been chalev is enough to obligate me into chatot. So there where it says, and he knew partial awareness is enough. Certainly over here, partial awareness is enough. So why are you saying it's Rabbi Yishmael who says that you don't need any awareness at all? Say that it's Rebbe who says... Partial awareness is enough. The Gemara answers, Hakamash Malan, the Rabbi Yishmael lo boyidiya bitchila. You're right. He could have said it goes according to Rebbe, who says partial awareness is enough. But he wanted to teach me something additional. He wanted to let us know that there's an opinion named Rabbi Yishmael who says that you don't need any yidiya at all. He wasn't like, you know, oh, how can I explain this? The only way to explain this is say it's Rabbi Yishmael. No, he could have explained that it's Rebbe. But he wanted to let us know that there's an opinion called Rabbi Yishmael, the Rabbi Yishmael lo ba yidiya t'chil. To let me know there's an opinion named Rabbi Yishmael who holds you don't need yidiya at all. So it could be according to him. That's no big Kiddush. Wait, I had that 
I had that before. I'm going to have it later on. Rabbi Yishmael says you're not liable, right? He, right? We have different amounts of, when it says, what does it come to teach me? And according to Rabbi Yishmael, the lo miyatule cry v'nelam, he doesn't have this extra pasuk of v'nelam to teach me that you had to know initially and then forgot. The mechayev al right? So I know, I know already. You tell me, oh, I want you to know there's a Rabbi Yishmael out there who says you don't need Yedia. I already have that. I know Rabbi Yishmael didn't learn from the pasuk v'nelam which we all use, everyone else used to teach me that you need to have the idea tchila. You need to have prior awareness. No. What is? No. We knew that. But what did Reish Lakish want to teach me? Mao de Tema. I might have thought, yeah, he let me cry. Great. We know from the Mishnah that he doesn't learn it out from the Psukim. He says there's no extra posse to teach me initial awareness. He uses that word benelah for something else. But very often, migamara itlay. Ava, I would have thought, migamara itlay. So he doesn't have a pasuk. So how does, but nevertheless, he holds, you need to have initial idea, initial awareness. How does he know it? Gemara. What's Gemara? He learned it. What we call halacha le Moshe Misenai. Sometimes we have a halacha that's from Moshe Misenai. With, which we don't have a source in the Torah, but Moshe taught it to us on Har Sinai. So I might have thought, yeah, Rabbi Yishmael is only arguing as how we darshan, how we expound those psukim. And this one says, Vanellam teaches me you need initial awareness. He says, no, Vanellam teaches me something else. But he nevertheless agrees that you need initial awareness, albeit not from the pasuk, but how? But I might have thought of Yishmael also agrees you need to have the idea to Chila, just he doesn't learn from that Pasuk. Kamash Malan comes Reish Lakish to teach me that no. Not only does he not learn that, that you need Yidea from the Pasuk, he doesn't learn it at all. He holds you don't need Yidea. So why did Reish Lakish say, it's Rabbi Ishmael? Why didn't he answer? Who says you don't need Yedea? Why didn't he answer, it's Rabbi? It's Rebbe who says, partially Yedea is enough? He could have answered that. But that wasn't teaching me anything new. Why did he say it's Rabbi Ishmael? To teach me that Rabbi Ishmael, who says that you don't learn out from the Pasuk and Elam that you need Yedea, actually holds, you don't learn it from anywhere else either and actually hold la halacha, you don't need Yedea at all. And that's why he'll be liable when he went on road one. And then Mikdash realized, went on road two, right? So then, right, he never had a Yedea. I knew that I was Tame. I don't need Yedea Tchila. He knows in the end, he went on road one and entered the Mikdash. Went on road two, entered the Mikdash. He entered the Mikdash while he was Tame. There's no getting past that. And therefore, he'll need to bring his carbon olive the yore. Why? Right? But there was no definite idea beforehand. Figure out definite idea, right? First of all, he had partial idea. According to Rebbe, that's enough. According to Rabbi Bichayev, twice. But even according to or it's Rabbi Yishmael. Oh, Rabbi Yishmael holds you don't need idea whatsoever. I wasn't so clear about that. Now I am. Hadron Allah, we will review you. Woo! Tatuma, the chapter titled knowledge is knowledge awareness of your tuma and then entered hadron alach yidiot ha tuma hadron alach yidiot ha tuma and like i said uh art shavua tov when you see this and art will take over monday i'll be back on friday to continue and we'll record next friday also now your question joe so in the case of someone selling bad meat say that someone came to you and they said rabbi i think maybe you should buy bye bye everyone incredible person good shot to see him incredible person came to you and said rabbi i think you should buy your meat elsewhere yeah. okay and, and, you know no one knows that there's any questions but and then you continue to buy your meat at that place still is there I mean, is that awareness it's, you know, it's a credible person, someone that you should trust. Um, interesting. 
I would say that that would make that a case of Suffolk awareness, which according to Rebbe would be enough. I would say, you know, in other words, enough for what? According to Rebbe, that would be enough that, let's say, I, I, um, didn't they rule that all the meat According to Rebbe, that would be enough in a case that, right, you told me, oh, uh, 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 right, right, butcher store number one, uh, I'm not so sure if it's if everything is so uh, yidey dighty over there. And I went ahead and I bought and I ate the meat, right? Meat and then, no, that that's all one idea. Oh. And then, right, so I, and then after that, I said, you know, Joel's a, Joel knows his stuff and he warned me, I probably shouldn't go on. So then I went to butcher store number two. And, right, and as I'm walking in there, Joel, you say, oh, Rabbi, I need to tell you a problem here also. Right? And then I ate in, in and, 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 and then I did number two, right, separate place. So then if we find out that both of them are trafe, then according to Rebbe, I think I would have to bring two Hot out, right? I had that, I had that suffix idea in between. Didn't they rule in that case that people could eat the meat that they had in their freezer? I doubt it. I think so. I would think not. That was just the thing. No, that, uh, no, I don't think they ruled you can eat the meat that's in the freezer from that guy. I think they would they, 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 they were lenient in terms of of how you need to kosher everything. But meat in the freezer from that guy, right? Well, you didn't know if that was part so, of that. Was... So the first incident would be awareness? Right. It, it, if anything, maybe, right, they were able to determine, right, which meat were problematic. And, or that it hadn't been done now for, right, right, that, that it had been done, but he had stopped the past. Uh, I'm not sure. But, but if, right, if it was, you know, current, then I can't imagine the ruling would be, yeah, the meat in the freezer, go ahead, but just don't buy there again. You know, we're closing down. Yeah. Okay? yeah. I, I can't imagine. So as far as awareness, the first incident, I mean, it could be a restaurant or anything. And someone said, Rabbi, I think there's questions. Is that creating partial awareness at that time? I think so. I mean, it, if it's a reputable person. Right. It was someone who just likes to slander, you know, ah, the place is no good, ah, I don't think it's kosher. Right? You know, we're talking about that, um, you know, someone in the Kashwood field. And so if someone came up to you and said, you know, I, X place, maybe you might avoid it for a while, but then splash out, would you avoid it at that point? Um, I would so it's it's good to imagine so. <laughs> I, would, I would like to think so. Yeah. Did they have all these things worked out already at the Mishkan and they just forgot? You know what I mean? I'm sure they knew it already then, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And then maybe just forgot. All right, man. A good Shabbos. Good Shabbos good so, thank you. I won't see you guys. How? I'll probably see you tomorrow. I might see you tomorrow morning. Enjoy your time away from us. So 10 o'clock, we are having a, 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 a chant at the Coast of Mercy. Yes, funeral 10 o'clock. Okay. Shall they? We'll go over there at 10. What do you think the funeral for David Krauss was going to be like? Um, Neil Young, I don't think we'll go. I think it's going to be a lot of Neil, Neil Young, I don't think we'll go. Will he never read up? David Crosby said he got guts. And David McDuff, I thought Neil Young was all about peace and love. Then then he'll, then he'll show up. Where is he going to be? I don't know. Was he Jewish? Look it up. I don't know. I'm asking Neil you. Young, no. No, David Crosby. Look it up. I'm asking you. You're my source. I don't know it right now. Look it up. You're my looker upper. I want to I wanna know. His father sure. was a Hollywood producer. Yeah, let's find out. Are you looking it up? No. Oh. Look it up on your phone. What? Look it up on your phone. What? 
So here's the deal. Where do I get that machine that makes the water? And how much it costs? Yeah. Well, you got to follow them first. No, first I want to know the water machine. Because what that machine? Be, huh? You get it from the tap. Did that save into your yeah. phone? I don't know. Remember the TV show where they had Snyder, who was the handyman? Yeah. This is what your keychain looks That's like. That's not my keychain. Oh. Snyder. Oh. So, you know, there's a machine that I want to find out yeah. if we can get it. What do you do? You plug it in, it makes water. Don't you just get that from a faucet? No, it makes water out of the air. Huh. Oh, I actually seen that on the news. Okay, um, you know the name of the machine? <clears throat> I know that on the news that I saw, it's a guy who has a ranch in Malibu, yeah. Hills, and he uses it to supply all of his water. Yeah. And it, it, it's out of, he's just drawing it out of the air. And he uses it actually to water his fields, I believe, too. I mean, he's really? able to, it makes that much brings up a lot of water. That's what I think we should. I think, though, it's a pretty big machine. And no, I think it's like a refrigerator. Uh, it like it was pretty, did it go on your thing? No. Why would it not work? I don't know.